Hello, fellow pen lovers and stationery enthusiasts. It's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit. And today I have another ink swatching video for everybody out there. So we are now in February and as cliche as it is, I really want to uh, use a couple of pink inks this month just because of Valentine's Day. And I do feel like it's an ink that I don't utilize enough, an ink color that I don't utilize enough. And I have three colored And I have three pens that I really want to use that I think would look really good with uh, different sort of pink inks. There's my Twisby Rose Gold Mint Diamond Mini. My little Caveco Sport in the Iridescent. And then my Platinum 3776 in that gorgeous Sakura, which I still think looks like some very delicate pink snake skinny kind of thing. I don't know. I love this pen though. So I want to find inks to use with these particular pens this month. Uh, but like I said, I don't really use pink inks as much as I probably should considering how many I have. Um, I've picked nine that I think will work well. Uh, I just want to swatch those out and sort of see what they look like and what will go with what. And my preference for pink inks, it really does tend a little bit more towards the subtle or dusty rosy kind of colors. I'm not like bright, bright pink uh, kind of girl, but I do have like one that's a little bit more traditional than all of the rest. So we'll see. Uh, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and get to those swatches and just see how it all pans out. Okay, so that one is much more of your traditional pink, at least for me anyway, but it is really, really pretty. And I do think that I could see myself actively using it this month, uh, especially since I am specifically trying to do uh, more with like pinks. So we'll see. Okay, so Wearing Goals Twelfth Night is a pink that I do actually use kind of frequently as far as pinks go. It's a slightly lighter shade, but it's got some really, really beautiful shimmer in it. Um, and I really, really do like the way that it looks in uh, a stub nib especially. So uh, hopefully this dries down and we'll see how it sort of stacks up with the others.
This is another one of those more subtle pinks that I actually do have in my rotation fairly frequently. This one is Herban's Rue d'Anclay. Uh, again, as always, forgive my really terrible French. I believe Rue d'Anclay means rusty anchor or something like that. Um, I don't know that I've ever thought, well, this is a rusty color, but I do love this color. It definitely is more... Um, I would say like a little bit more fleshy or melony than say these two, which are a bit more what I think of as like, like the brighter floral pinks. So it definitely is something again, more in my wheelhouse, but I do love it. It shades really beautifully and it's light, but not so light that it's hard for me to read. I don't think so. There is Urban's Roy d'Anclay. I have been looking for an excuse to use and get Robert Oster's Rose Gold Antigua for quite some time. Uh, big thank you to Lau for sending me a sample of it. Um, I don't always have the best luck with Robert Oster inks, Oster Oster, however you say it, uh, because I use a lot of extra fine and fine nibs, his inks do tend to be kind of dry for, for my writing. Uh, but I just think his colors are really gorgeous, especially this rose gold antiqua and a couple of other ones that I've picked up recently that I'm just going to throw into stubs and some of my wettest writers in the hopes that they will work out okay. Uh, but I just, I love the base shade of rose in this. It's like that perfect kind of dusty rose. Uh, and then the rose gold shimmer in it just makes it pop so, so beautifully. So I'm really, really hoping that this one will work out okay for me. Okay, and here we have Robert Oster's Australis Rose. I think that this is pretty much the base color of the Rose Gold Antigua, but without the shimmer. And it's just such a beautiful color. Um, while I was doing the actual sort of like circular swatch, it, I don't know, is it is it dry? Is it not? It's kind of hard to tell. It didn't feel super dry while I was writing, but we'll have to see again, but I do really love, love, love this color.
Okay, next up is Ferris Wheel Press's Spadina Rose, and I only just recently discovered that it is called Spadina. Uh, a Canadian friend of mine was explaining, I guess it's the name of a street, or... Don't quite recall the entire story, but Spadina Rose. I think this color is beautiful. This was actually one of my very first Ferris Wheel Press inks, um, and I really love... I, I think it's like from their more basic line uh, that doesn't have shimmer, that just is just a really pretty color, and I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, but I have used it quite a lot, so we'll see. Okay, this is Waringol's White Rabbit. It really does kind of run the line of whether it's an actual pink or not. Uh, I think I can consider it like a really soft pink, but I do think it's quite lovely. I do think it's a really interesting color. I don't know if it's a little light for me, especially with my finer nibs. So again, it's another one that we will kind of have to see. Also, apologies about the light. I might have to shift to my filming light just because I'm definitely borderline too dark to be doing this natural light, but we shall see if I can make it. Okay, Vinta Inks, La Cambini. This is one that was on my radar ages and ages ago, but it was out of stock pretty much everywhere for a very long time. Finally managed to pick up a copy uh, from Lemur Inc., who is, a, a, it's a great, great store. They always have a really, really great uh, Vinta Inks available. And I really, really like it. It's definitely a more traditional pink, but with a boatload of gold shimmer in it. Um, I have always had a lot of luck with Vinta Inks shimmer uh, inks, so I'm not super nervous about it not working well in a finer nib, but again, we'll see. Okay, so my final ink in the lineup is Color Versus Hyojungguk from the Kingdom series. This is another one that I use pretty frequently. It's sort of a beautiful kind of rusty pinkish rose, and I just, it's just, it's absolutely beautiful, and it works really, really well in both fine or broad nibs. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and let these dry. I will say I will probably be using my filming light when we get back, just because again, I'm totally losing the battle with natural light at the moment. Uh, but I'm definitely excited right now. I can see like, I'm a little bit more surprised by some of these than others and how they kind of line up, but they're still wet. So let's go ahead, take a break and see how they are when they're fully dried down. Okay. I am back. Uh, apologies again for the light shift. I really had to use artificial light at this point because I completely lost the natural light, but everything is pretty much dry and ready for a final look. I really, really love all of these colors and I'm having a very, very hard time <laughs> narrowing it down to which ones are going to fill these three pens uh, so you can get a closer look. 
that Sailor Shikiori Sakura Mori is just really such a beautiful true pink. I think it's soft, but it's still, you know, vibrant enough to show up very easily, whether or not I'm going to be using a fine nib or a broad one. Then there's Wearing Gold Twelfth Night, that blue shimmer. Look at that. And even when we're talking about just in the writing, it just, that little hint of sparkle is so pretty. I really do love that color. Then we've got Urban Rue d'Ancle. I just think it's such an interesting color and it has some really beautiful shading and just a teeny tiny hint of that dark, dark sheen at the very edge of the letters. And I love that. And here's my Robert Oster Rose Gold Antigua. Look at that. That is bonkers. I love this color. I'm so happy that I have a sample of it. Uh, we'll see how this goes if I decide to use it. And then there's Robert Oster Australis Rose. Beautiful, beautiful base color. Some really beautiful shading going on with just that hint of that dark sheen right at the very edge of the letters again. It's a really beautiful color. Then we've got my Ferris Wheel Press Spadina Rose, my tried and true, such a beautiful, beautiful shade, lovely characteristics, and just a fun one to write. It's, it's quite wet. It's got really good flow, whether, whatever kind of nib you're using. It's really a great, great shade of dusty pink rose. And there's Wearing Gold White Rabbit. I think this one is just an interesting color. It's a little bit light in uh, super duper fine nibs, but lots of really, really interesting shading going on. You can see it runs the gamut from like very, very pale, pale, pale pink. Uh, but then it has that nice like touch of deep shade at the same time. So, you know, it's just an interesting ink. And here's my Vinta La Cambini. Look at that. Whoa, that is some serious shimmer. Um, I'm very, very interested in seeing how this goes. You can see there, uh, you know, if the shimmer really pours out, it kind of takes things over. But when it's just a hint, like once we get down here into the little squiggles that I do, it's so beautiful and it's not quite subtle, I wouldn't say. But when it just hits the light in the right way, it really pops. I love that. And then, of course, my Colorverse Kingdom series, Kyujang uh, Gak. Uh, this one is just a tried and true for me. I really, really like the way that it looks in any nib, whether you're talking about extra fines or broads or stubs. Just a really beautiful, subtle, sort of warm tone. It's kind of like a brownie pink that just, I don't know, I, it really works for me. So those are some of my pink and dusty rose inks that I've been kind of debating on this month. I do think that this Robert Oster Rose Gold Antigua is pretty much made for my Twisby Diamond Mini in the Rose Gold, so I'm pretty sure that that's going to happen. Um, as far as my Platinum 3776 in the Sakura Celluloid, this one, I'm kind of waffling. Do I want to do the Sakura Mori? Do I want to do Rui d'Ancle? Spadina Rose? I don't know. I really don't. It's kind of one of those. Or maybe even the Australis Rose. But if I'm doing the Rose Gold Antigua, is that too much of the same thing? That one's the one that's up in the air. And then this lovely little guy, my Caveco Sport in the Iridescent. I'm pretty sure we're going to give the La Combini a try in that one. So um, once I make my final decision, I'll make sure that I pop a post on Instagram showing which inks went where. But yeah, I this was a lot of fun. This was more fun than I thought it would be because, like I said, I'm not always like a big pink fan. But when I really dive into the Dusty Roses especially, and even this one that's like more true pink than anything I usually ever do, I just think it's really beautiful. So there you go. Uh, if this video was in any way entertaining, useful, interesting, please, please, please do consider hitting that like button, potentially even subscribing to the channel. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, ideas about other pinks that I should be using or adding to my collection, definitely pop those in the comments as well. Would love to talk about that. If you are curious about 
using any of these pinks in your pens for February too, definitely let me know about that. Um, as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. If you have made it to the end of this very long chatty video, uh, I really, really appreciate it and appreciate the time that you've given me uh, to watch in the first place. So again, thank you so much for joining me and hopefully I will see you next time. Bye-bye.